On Christmas Day, 1996, a frantic and distressed Patsy Ramsey called 911, claiming her daughter had been a victim of a kidnapping. Six hours later, however, the body of her six-year-old daughter was found in the utility room of the basement. She was found with duct tape over her mouth and a cord around her neck. The crime scene was extremely compromised due to a large amount of friends and family arriving to comfort the Ramseys. 26 years later, what was followed are dozens of accusations from both the police and the Ramseys claiming everything from police incompetence to parental wrongdoing. Was this horrific act done by someone the family knew, even perhaps a family member? Or was this the act of a random insane person? This is the story of John Benet Ramsey. Before we get into today's story, my name is Jennifer and I am a psychic intuitive and a tarot reader. And if you're a fan of the dark and mysterious with a little tarot thrown in for good measure, then I am the girl for you. I upload two to three times a week on this channel. And if you're really a fan of tarot, you can join me on my other channel, Jennifer Walker Zen. So if this is of interest to you, I would ask you to like, subscribe, and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my uploads. Uploads. Now, let's get into today's story. The Ramsey family awoke early on Christmas Day at around 5.30 a.m. because they wanted to get an early start on their family vacation and needed to fly to Charlevoix, Michigan. It is claimed by the Ramseys that everything appeared normal and nothing seemed out of place. John went to go take a shower while Patsy got herself ready. But to her horror, she discovered an incredibly lengthy three-page ransom note on the bottom of the kitchen staircase. Patsy claims to not have read the entire letter, she simply read the first few lines and screamed in panic. Before checking John Bonet's room and finding it empty, John, hearing Patsy scream, rushed out the shower and glanced at the note and rushed down the hallway with Patsy to check in on their son, Burke. After finding Burke still in his room, John then read the entirety of the note, which stated he would be receiving a call between 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. that morning and to not involve the authorities. However, completely discarding the threat, he told Patsy to call the police at 5.52 a.m. Almost immediately after getting off the phone with police, they contacted their friends and family who immediately rushed over to be by their side. The police arrived at the Ramsey's home within three minutes. Almost immediately after arriving, the police began searching the entire house, but curiously, were unable to find any sign of force entry. Officer Rick French checked out the entire basement, but only found a door secured by a wooden latch. Unable to get it open, he simply walked away, claiming he was looking for the exit route of the kidnapper. And since the latch was closed from the inside, he ruled it out. Allegedly, John was beginning to make arrangements to pay the ransom money. Police believing they were dealing with a kidnapping only cordoned off John Bonet's bedroom to prevent contamination of evidence. However, absolutely no precautions were taken to prevent the same being done to the rest of the house. Police also claimed that they were made no effort to protect evidence elsewhere. Because they had no reason to believe that John Bonet was still inside the house, as a result, family members and friends arriving to support the Ramseys were making breakfast, washing dishes, etc. And for the most part, moving freely around the home, most likely misplacing or destroying evidence. Detective Linda Aunt arrived at 8 a.m. the next morning, prepared for the kidnapper's phone call. However, the phone call never came and nobody attempted to claim the money, according to Detective Linda Aunt. But strangely, no one in the house acknowledged that the deadline had passed, which she thought was very odd. It wasn't until around 1 o'clock p.m. 
when it was clear to Detective Linda that there would be no call, that she asked John Ramsey and another officer to search the house again to try to find more evidence. Weirdly, John immediately went straight to the basement without hesitation, and that's when he came across the same door that Officer Rick French had previously ignored. John, however, opened it to sadly discover the body of John Bonet. Her mouth was covered with duct tape, a cord was wrapped around her wrist and neck, the basement window was left open, and a suitcase was underneath it, as if somebody had used it to step up to the window as an escape. John claims the only thing he could think about was saving his daughter, so he picked her up from the basement floor and headed upstairs. According to Detective Linda, she saw John running up the stairs with John Bonet and immediately ordered him to put her down. After placing her gently on the floor, John asked Detective Linda if John Bonet was dead, to which she replied, yes. After feeling for her pulse, she then asked him to dial 911. It was at this point she says that she tucked her shoulder holster under her arm, placing her gun right next to her and consciously began counting to herself that she had 18 bullets. When asked what her mindset was at that moment, she reported to have said, I didn't know if we'd all be alive when people showed up. Everything that made sense in that instant. I knew what happened. I believe the killer was still in the house. The autopsy revealed that John Benet Ramsey died from asphyxiation due to being strangled by a garrote that was made from a broken paintbrush that was part of her mother's Patsy's art kit. She also had an eight and a half inch fracture on her skull. In addition, trace DNA was found on her long johns and a single blood stain was found on her undergarments, both of which belong to a single unidentified male, not found in the FBI database of convicted violent offenders. There were also two strange marks found on John Benet's body, which some have speculated as resembling the marks left from a stun gun which they believe may have been used to take John Bonet quietly into the basement. Additionally, some pineapple was discovered in her stomach, suggesting that she had eaten it just hours before her death. There was a bowl of pineapple on the kitchen table with a spoon in it that night before her body was discovered, but neither John nor Patsy remembered putting this out or feeding her the fruit. Nevertheless, Patsy's fingerprints were found on the bowl. Additionally, there was also a tall glass next to the bowl that had Burke's fingerprints on it. This discovery was a bit odd, especially because the family claimed that Burke slept through the entire night and was only awoken by the police searching in his room for his sister. Coincidentally, his favorite snack was pineapple. And finally, there were two sets of unidentified footprints found outside the house. But strangely, there was no sign of a forced entry, just the open window, the ransom note. The note was being passed around and reviewed by all of their friends and family that unfortunately contaminated it. Of the evidence left behind, the ransom note is the most baffling. First, because it's too long. Normally, a ransom note is maybe a page and gets right to the point. This one, however, was full of ramblings. When legal analysis is reported to have called this the war and peace of all ransom notes, meaning that in comparison, this ransom note was epic. The individual requested 118,000 from their account. 100,000 was to be in $100 bills and the remaining 18,000 in $20 bills. The amount requested is extremely relevant because it happens to be the exact amount of John Ramsey's bonus from his company, which means that this person knew him personally. The following is an excerpt from the ransom note. Mr. Ramsey, listen carefully. We are a group of individuals that represents a small foreign fraction. We respect your business, but not the country that it serves. The two gentlemen watching over your daughter do not particularly like you, so I advise you not to provoke them. 
Speaking to anyone about your situation, such as police or FBI, will result in your daughter being beheaded. You could try to deceive us, but be warned that we are familiar with law enforcement's countermeasures and tactics. You stand a 99% chance of killing your daughter if you try to outsmart us. Follow our instructions and you stand a 100% chance of getting her back." End quote. The note was signed SBTC. The authenticity of the note, however, was met with high degree of skepticism, not only because of the way in which it was written, but because of two coincidental issues that just weren't adding up. The first was the amount of ransom requested. The second is that the note was determined to have been written with the pen and the paper found inside the home. Additionally, a practice letter was found with spelling errors made to easy words, yet the more difficult words were spelled correctly. This combined with a lack of evidence of an intruder began to raise a lot of red flags with those in law enforcement, with some claiming anonymously that for the Ramsey's claims to be true, you would have to suspend common sense, citing the fact that it was hard to believe that the killer somehow entered the house, wrote the note inside the home, and then for some unknown reason, killed John Bennett. All this occurring while the other three family members were inside the house. The suspects, John, Patsy, Burke, Ramsey. The Ramsey family was under heavy scrutiny given the suspicious nature of the ransom note, which brought into question its authenticity. Additionally, there was very little evidence to suggest an intruder was the actual person responsible for the murder. What further complicated things was instead of the Ramseys talking to police, they talked to a major news outlet instead. Whenever police tried to formally interview the Ramseys, they were faced with lawyers and wealthy friends of the Ramseys who told them to give them room to grieve. It is alleged that what the police really wanted to do was formally interrogate the Ramseys before they had a chance to get their story together. Some in law enforcement have theorized that Patsy accidentally killed John Bonet due John Bonet's waning interest in the beauty pageants. It is alleged that Patsy Ramsey wanted John Bonet to follow in her footsteps as a way to reclaim her former glory as a former Miss West Virginia and pressured John Bonet into participating in the pageants. This allegation seems to be supported by John Bonet herself. Allegedly, one of Patsy's friend's daughters recalled a conversation where she complimented John Bonet on her pageant trophies displayed in the case. To which John Bonet reportedly said, those trophies aren't mine, they are my mom's. Another allegation against Patsy Ramsey is that she was extremely upset with John Bonet's alleged bet wedding. However, it has also been reported by those associated with the pageant, as well as other competitors' parents, that John Bonet showed no signs of malcontent, and in fact, appeared to be extremely happy. Finally, at the time of her passing, John Bonet Ramsey was a well-decorated beauty pageant competitor, having won five high-profile competitions, seemingly due to the tutelage of Patsy. Burke Ramsey, John Bonet's nine-year-old little brother, was theorized to accidentally have killed John Bonet due to his odd behavior. However, there was virtually no evidence supporting the theory, and at best is extremely thin and circumstantial. As for the ransom note, handwriting analysis ruled out John Ramsey and ruled Patsy's Ramsey as inconclusive. Most experts at this point believe that the signs are more consistent with child abduction and the murder being done by an intruder. However, in 1999, a grand jury did in fact vote to indict John Bonet's parents on charges of child abuse, resulting in her death. However, in an extremely rare move, the Boulder District Attorney at the time, Alex Hunter, did not sign the indictment, believing that there was not enough evidence to support the charges. Additionally, the DNA evidence found at the crime scene matched none of the Ramsey's family members. 
officially exonerating the entire Ramsey family. The next suspect was a local man named Bill McReynolds, who had visited the Ramsey house two days prior to John Bonet's murder. He sometimes dressed up as Santa Claus. What's coincidental about this particular suspect is that his own daughter had been kidnapped 22 years ago. Also, Bill McReynolds' wife is reported to have written a play about a child getting touched inappropriately by an adult and then murdered in the basement. This play, however, was written before the events with John Bonet. It is also alleged that the murder of John Bonet, Mr. Rentals, particularly hard because he allegedly formed a friendship with her that profoundly changed his life. So much so that when he was scheduled for a heart surgery, it is reported that he told his wife if he died during the surgery to take the vial of glitter John Bonet had given him and mix it with his ashes. However, other than this apparent friendship with John Bonet and the fact that he had been a little eccentric, he was ruled out due to not being a DNA match. The next suspect was a man named Gary Oliva. He lived a few blocks away from the Ramsey's home at the time of the murder. In 2016, Oliva was arrested on charges of possessing illegal photos of children. In December of 2000, Oliva was arrested on unrelated drug charges and was found to be carrying a photo of John Bonet in his backpack. The reason he gave for having John Bonet's picture was extremely creepy at best. He claims he thought she was an exceptional girl and felt very deeply about her passing and wanted to create a shrine dedicated to her passing. Additionally, a supposed friend of Oliva named Michael Vale claimed that Oliva called him the day after the murder and confessed to killing a little girl in Colorado. This claim, however, could not be substantiated, nor was he a match for the DNA evidence. So he was alleviated as the potential killer. The final suspect is John Mark Carr, a former elementary school teacher that confessed to harming John Benet Ramsey in 2006. His confession came 10 years after the murder. He confessed to the murder via email to a journalist professor named Michael Tracy. Their email correspondence lasted for four years. Michael claims that this was the worst experience of his life by far. He hated pretending to be John Carr's friend, but he felt obligated to get the truth. Carr claimed that he was in love with John Bonet and didn't mean to hurt her. He also claims to have drugged her, but unintentionally hit her over the head with a flashlight and took her to the basement temporarily. On August 16, 2008, John Mark Carr was tracked down in Bangkok, Thailand and extradited back to the States. He was, however, quickly ruled out as a suspect due to John Bonet not having drugs in her system, which he claimed to have given her. But more importantly, the DNA evidence was not a match. Unfortunately, there are no new developments. However, with the new advances in DNA technology, the killer may still be caught. Now that you know the story, let's get some answers. Join me in my investigation room. Hello, welcome to my investigation room. I want to preface this on saying this is for entertainment purposes only. I have a series of questions and I'm going to use a couple of different card systems. I'm also going to tell you my feelings about what I feel happened in this situation. Okay, so um, first of all, our first question, and I'm going to, because I feel like this case is still very active, you know, uh, there's things to be decided here. I'm going to say also alleged. Okay, when I say entertainment purposes only and allegedly, I'm going to say allegedly when I say certain things. Okay, so the card systems I'll be using today is Tarot, the Gypsy, and the uh, Lenormand. So, first of all, let's talk about the first question here. The first question that I was very curious about, because the ransom note felt like it played a very 
a big role in this case. Obviously, speculation on how the ransom note was wrote. Obviously, it was used, a pen and paper was used from in the house, um, how it was discovered, so forth, so on. So I really wanted to find out about this ransom note first. And what I felt about when I first tuned into what was going on with this ransom note, I will say that I, I felt like it was a female that wrote the ransom note. Okay, that's what I felt. Okay, so, and obviously going into the cards, I'm digging deeper into what I felt. And interesting enough, very strange what I found here, guys. And I'm just going to preface this on saying this is for entertainment purposes only, and this is a legend, okay? Okay, so what did I find here? I found a, what looks to me like a couple, okay? So what it looks to me, and I'll read it exactly the way I see here, it shows me that there was this um, clarity of why someone would walk away from a death. There was this patient energy and a big shock and surprise about, you know, a person. And we see another person card about a truth and a judgment call about uh, this commitment or these two people. And again, if we look here, okay, there were some issues, masculine, feminine energy in despair. And also I had the sense that this was done to buy time. So, uh, because there was some shock and surprise. All right, so we're gonna go over uh, the second question, which is how did the person get into the house? I'm actually gonna use two questions for this because uh, I also want to find out if this person was known by the family. So this is going to be a two-part question here because I it actually answered those questions. So, and also I was tuning into the, the energies here and I'm also going to just say again, this is for entertainment purposes only and alleged. Okay, so let's go and take a look here. All right, so first of all, how did the person or people get access to the house. Well, it looks like this situation happened at night. It looks like somebody was resting, okay? And uh, we see that there was knowledge, and this is very interesting, of somebody coming in through a window. It looks like um, something maybe was left open, okay? And there was some um, indecisions or a choice that was going to be made here about a house. Somebody was familiar with the house, okay? And then we're coming back to this question, the second question here, we're going to use the same thing again. Was the person uh, known by the family? We see a friend card. And the other feeling that I got while doing this particular uh, spread was that the person was better known from Patsy Ramsey. So Patsy Ramsey knew of this person a little bit more than maybe the other family members, okay? That's what I felt, okay? And we see the potential signs that could be involved in the situation was a Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces energy. And we're seeing there's a masculine energy here. Uh, it looks like there was, this person waited for the opportunity, an offer that was presented and that they were committed to it. They made a choice here and we see that they may have traveled here uh, because we have the Six of Swords energy. So it looks like this person traveled there, okay? Waited for the opportunity to come up here and at nighttime while people were resting. All right, let's move on to our fourth question. Okay, our next question is, was there more than one person involved with the death of John Benet? Allegedly, for entertainment purposes only, Let's take a look. Okay, uh, very strange. Okay guys, um, yes, but I don't feel like what it's saying to me is that there was the other person was directly involved. Okay, again, we're seeing two people, a masculine and feminine energy. And it shows me that there was some kind of resting and something to do with work and money, 10 of pentacles energy. So, 
it may have just been because something wasn't, we'll just say there, there may have been something in the house that wasn't as secure as it could have been. Uh, I'm just gonna say, keep it clear cut, yes, okay. Let's move on to our next question. Final question is, um, was one of the main suspects that I went over uh, uh, during my analysis of this case, were they involved uh, with the demise of uh, John Benet Ramsey? Allegedly, for entertainment purposes only, let's take a look. Okay guys, in this case scenario, because the way the cards are, it's very, interesting it shows a taurus virgo capricorn energy which obviously would lean towards a yes a six of uh, wands which would re lean towards a yes but in this scenario it seems to me that this was an indirect one of the suspects is indirectly involved with the demise and what did it was it say it says Queen of Pentacles and any of you guys that watch me on my other channel knows the Queen of Pentacles for me is a motherly energy. Cause some kind of heartache because of attention. Okay, this represents someone getting attention. Okay, and there was a judgment call for happiness but caused some confusions and there was a waiting around and this stuck energy and something about the situation wasn't accepted. And again, this is a mother energy, cause some regret and a stuck energy cause of being used, okay? to heal a situation and it looks like there was a visitor, okay? So I feel like in this situation, this may be referring to, I feel like, that the mother was indirectly involved. I'm not saying that the mother was involved because I did do a yes or no of finding out whether or not she was the person and it said no. So I feel like when it's referencing this person, I feel like it's saying that this person was indirectly involved somehow with the individual that caused the demise. Okay, so my darlings, I would definitely be interested in hearing your feedback in the comments below. I look forward to hearing from you guys and definitely having a dialogue about this. This is a very uh, intriguing case, that's for sure. And again, I want to preface this on this is for entertainment purposes only. I will see you guys soon and I definitely want to hear from you guys in the comments below. I definitely will uh, definitely like to engage with you on this. All right, and also my darlings, if you like it this way, you want me to continue it this way, make sure you hit that like button and let me know in the comments below. I'll see you guys soon. Have a great day or night wherever you are.